Welcome to InventorCamp Professor on our series of Getting Started. I'm Sydney, your InventorCamp Professor, and this session we'll be sharing apart using the options of HSM. If we take a look at this part, this is a typical mold. The best way to machine this out would be using HSM. In our operations, we'll start with our first operation that I've created. And if I go into it, you'll note the following. In my geometry, we automatically have our target. That's our geometry for the part. In my tool area, in this particular case, I'll be using a 20 millimeter end mill. And note also on the side over here, we have different settings for our cutting feeds, our link down feeds, our link up feeds, and also for our rapid moves. Our constraint boundaries, I've used a create manually a boundary box around the part itself, as can be seen around the, over here. And in my passes, I'll be leaving a thickness of 0 0.5 millimeters on the thickness and on the axial thickness and I'll be stepping down every millimeter. In my link area I'm using climb milling and my ramping will be a plunging ramping into the part itself and my retracts I'll be using the shortest route. If we take a look at the simulation you'll see that the simulation is using, and I'll use the solve verify simulation. You'll notice that it's also machining it every single area that can be machined all the way down to the very bottom. Now, in my next operation, I've done a rest machining operation because obviously that tool that I've chosen, be chosen before cannot go into every single area because it's a large tool. So I'm using the same geometry and this time my tool will be a 12 millimeter ball end mill. My constraint boundaries will be the same as before, boundary box. And we have here another field called previous operations. This shows us the previous operations that we used before using HSM. In this particular case we only have one and that's the operation that the rest machining will be dealing with. In my passes area, I'll be using the same thickness as I've used before. And note, every field that I click on, you see a picture on the side explaining what each field does. Now, my step down again will be one millimeter. My links, again, climb milling, and my ramping will be plunging, and I'll be using the same retracts. If I were to use my simulation, and this time let's use the 3D simulation, or the HostCAD simulation, you'll note that's working only in areas where the previous tool was not able to work on, and it's not working anywhere in these other areas as seen around here. If I turn the part around a little, you note that's also using the shortest path, jumping over the areas to get to other areas that has to be machined. Now, in my next two operations, I'm doing a semi-finish. We'll take a look at the operation itself. I'm using what we call the constant Z option for the semi-finish, where I work down in a constant Z motion, it works only on the XY levels and then it works its way down. My tool will be a 10 millimeter ball end mill, but let me go back for a moment to my geometry. And we know we have a little problem that a lot of times we have these, sm these smaller radiuses, the tools don't like actually that it gives us a sharp corner. So what we've done here is we've actually used what we call apply fillet. I've applied a fillet as shown here. And the fillet was automatically created around the part. And this fillet is actually bigger, or at least the same, bigger than the tool that I will be using. Now, in my constraint areas, 
Again, I'll be using the boundary box that I created before. In my passes area, since I'm doing a semi-finish, I'll be working of a thickness of 0.25 millimeters. And the same thing with my axial thickness. Since I'm working, however, in constant Z, constant Z only works well, or should say it works best, when it works on steep angle parts, say between 40 and 90 degrees. So I've actually limited my working area to work only between the areas of 40 to 90 degrees. Now, in my next operation, the linear operation, the linear operation actually works better in shallow areas. So I've actually over here used the same technology, same tool even, with the same fillets, but over here, I've actually used in my passes area, zero to 42 degrees, therefore, thereby covering whichever area the constant Z could not machine. In my next operation, I, would, I used rest machining. Now what the rest machining will do now is all those areas where the tool cannot go into because I created a huge fillet, this tool will now be able to go into that area. And I'll be using a six millimeter ball end mill and my reference tool will be the diameter of the tool that I used in my um, in, in my area of applied fillets in the previous operations. And since I'm doing this again as a semi-finish, again I'll be using a 0.25 millimeter uh, to leave over in my thickness and my axial thickness, and a step down and step over of 0.3 millimeters. To look at the areas where this, where this, where this was machining, you'll note that it only worked exactly in those corners as shown over here. Now in my next operation I decided to start now with my finish. In my finish I'll be using the first part will be using constant Z again limiting, limiting it to the angles that I want to work between and this time again I'll be using the fillets not to have this, this particular tool go into those areas. My constraint boundaries will be the exact as before. My passes, this time my thickness and axial thickness will be at zero. And my step down, I've set it at 0.2 millimeters. And my angles, as I said, I limited between 40 and 90 degrees. And in my next operation, I did the exact same thing, except this time using my linear operation. In my linear operation, again, I've, ha I've applied the fillet. The tool, again, the same tool as my other operation that I used in the constant Z. Constraint boundaries, the same thing. And my passes between 0 and 42 degrees, covering the areas where the constant Z could not machine. And using a step over of 0.1 millimeters. Now, in my next operation, I've used the HSM rest machining op option. Again, just as before, but this time I'll be using a much smaller tool. The tool that I'll be using this time will be a 4 millimeter ball end mill. And my reference tool will be, again, the fillet that I've created for that operation, a 10 millimeter diameter ra with a 5 millimeter radius fillet that I've created for the pre previous operations. And my passes area, I'm doing a step down of step over of 0.1 millimeters. If I were to choose to show you exactly where those areas were, you'll see that it has now machined exactly inside these areas around here and these corners, all those corners where we had a bigger radius before. Last operation, I want to add a little chamfer on the edge of these parts over here, on this part over here. So I've chosen again my target. This time the tool that I'll be using will be a chamfer drill of a diameter of 6 millimeters with a 60 uh, degree uh, angle on the part 
itself on the tool itself my drive boundaries were created automatically around the part in other words the um, actual boundary around the part is my drive boundary but I've used middle with an offset of one if I were to show you the offset in other words the center of the tool will actually be going around over here my constraint boundaries again is also created automatically and I've chosen middle this time a bigger offset so make sure the tool can actually get into there in my passes area what was important over here is that my thickness is zero but my axial thickness is minus 0 0.3 allowing it to actually gouge into part creating that chamfer if I were to do a simulation I use my solid verify simulation. You'll note, now slow this down a little bit, the tool will go down, travel exactly around the part itself as shown here, and give us a nice chamfer around the part. This actually, we've actually now created, completely created the um, operation and completely finished machining this part using HSM. Thank you for joining us on Inventor Camp Professor. Take care and have a nice day.